Greetings from Cybertron. This is Soundjack here with another episode of Soundjack's Rambles. And today I'm joined by Alyssa. Yo. And we are here to talk about Spamalot the musical. Oh boy. To clarify, oh. it's Monty Python's Spamalot. Monty Python Spamalot based off of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yes. So, uh, spoilers for the musical and the movie if you haven't seen that. Yep. If spoilers can be said. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, 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 how we got into uh, how, how we got to know about this show is is what we always do first, right? Yep. So, uh, Alyssa, how did you how did you get to know about this show? Um. Well, the show. I don't know, really. Like, I know, I know, it was a thing. Well, okay. So I knew it existed, but I always thought it was just a Monty Python sketch. I never realized that it was actually a musical based on the Holy Grail. Mm -hmm. And I only realized it was actually just a musical based on the Holy Grail until... I didn't know until we went to see it together. Yeah. That was the first time I was like, oh, it's a musical based on the Holy Grail? What? Up until then, I thought it was just a just just uh just a sketch yeah you know like just like monty python's it was just monty python's flying circus and it was just a monty python affiliated thing so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so specifically spam a lot uh basically when we went to see it that was my introduction to it but uh monty python itself uh i've been aware of that for years um i haven't watched all of Monty Python's Flying Circus, not even remotely close, but I have watched like a couple clips here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely watched a lot of the famous ones. I've watched the cheese skit, which is amazing. You would think you would think it would get old, but it just doesn't let up, and it's wonderful. I've seen the dead parrot one, classic. Uh, and what other? There was like another one about like someone died or something. I forget. That one was funny, but I can't forget. Like, I forget like the premise, but it was good. So, mm. yeah, I have watched Flying Circus. Incidentally, I actually haven't watched A Holy Grail myself yet. I do yeah. want to, but I haven't. Um, but I have. I am familiar with flying with Monty Python in general. So, this was not my first time to the rodeo so to speak at least in terms of Monty Python mm -hmm. so that's all I'll say about that what about you uh you know I'm not fully certain mm -hmm. um I I have seen the movie several times I I forget the earliest one but I want to say late grade school early high school mm-hmm when I first saw Monty Python and the Holy Grail and being in theater, I eventually learned, oh, hey, there's a musical of this. And it ended up on my Spotify playlist of musicals. Uh -huh. so I would listen to that frequently. And then when we saw it together earlier this year, uh, uh, it was the, it was a tour of the musical of Spamalot. Um, and we saw that together. That's the first time I actually saw the show in its entirety. Mm -hmm. um, but I have had listened to the soundtrack several, several times beforehand. Um, it was, uh, yeah, no, it's always been good. Though a few things made more sense uh, when seeing him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's my introduction. So, brief plot summary. Let's that go. So, uh, the Monty Python Spamalot is basically the plot of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And if you don't know what the plot to Monty Python and the Holy Grail is, it's basically the tale of King Arthur and his, not his merry men, that's Robin Hood, uh, <laughs> and his knights of the round table, there we go, who go and try to find uh, the Holy Grail. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's basically like a parody of that tale. Um, uh, I don't know, like, I know a little bit about Arthurian legend, and I have read some stories. I've definitely read Gwen and the Green Knight. But I don't know if I've read, like, any, like, real Arthurian tales or tales in which King Arthur is involved. But, like, basically, basically the entirety of the play is King, the conceit of Monty Python and the Holy Grail is King Arthur's journey to seek the Holy Grail only comedic, basically. Mm -hmm. So, like, pretty much all the standard stuff is there. You got King Arthur, Sir Gawain, Sir Lancelot, Camelot. Um, you also have uh, the Lady from the Lake, who you know gives him his sword, Excalibur. Uh, you got trials and tests and all this other stuff. So yep. if you're familiar with some to some degree with Arthurian legend, then you'll probably be familiar to some degree with this play uh, plot-wise. But, like, I feel like even if you aren't up to snuff on your Arthurian legend, you should be... It should be fine. You don't yeah. need to be a scholar to understand. It's it's very right. comedic, so... yeah, Indeed. Yep. So, uh, that's basically it. Yeah. I think. So, before we get into the, the spoiler section... Mm-hmm. Uh, would you recommend people go see the show? Uh, definitely. If you like musicals, I would so recommend it. Um, I think if you're interested in Monty Python, uh, go see it. Um, I feel like the movie would probably be more accessible, but yeah, I think this one, this one's definitely like it's 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 over the top, but in the right way. And yeah. I, I, I'm a fan. I do tend to like a lot of British comedy, so yeah, this, this, this is pretty good. I would, I would, I would say if you get a chance to see it, um, though, uh, definitely do it. Yeah, and I completely agree with that sentiment. This is a good, fun show. It's a very fun romp. You should go see it. Yep. Wow. So, on to characters. Okay. King Arthur, obviously. <laughs> yes. Uh, King Arthur is, um, I mean, he's he's your standard knight dude. He, I feel like he's probably the straight man to everyone else's antics for the most part. Yeah. Uh, which is funny because the guy who played uh, King Arthur in the production that we saw is gay. He has a husband. So it's it's funny. He's just a straight yeah. man, haha. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm good that, at jokes. That, uh, <laughs> not really, but like yeah. So he he's the more traditional knight character. He yeah. I mean he's not like he does make the jokes and there are like funny moments with him, but like he's not he's not the strangest character or the one that has the most laughs gets the most laughs. He's very he's very much this the springboard for a lot of comedy. Yeah, I think so. I don't really yeah. know if there's much to say about Arthur other than he's, he's King Arthur, basically. Yeah, he's King Arthur. Happy uh, guy, leader, trying to find people to on to go on his quest, etc. Yep, yeah. including Sir not appearing in this show. Exactly. Uh, and then we have Patsy, is King Arthur's trusted servant. Yep. And Steed. Yes. Because of yes. That. Yes. Uh, he he uses coconuts to pretend like there is a horse riding. I use that as a joke, I use that in a show I directed once. Yep. It's it's a it's a funny it's a funny gag. Yes, it is. Um, a I was not. I just remembered that I did that. He's literally King Arthur's pack mule. Yeah. Indeed. So. Um, uh, uh, let's, let's, uh, Sir Lancelot, the homicidally brave. Yep. Who, uh, during the course of the, who, yes, is very homicidally brave and also halfway the, through the show realizes he's gay. Yep. <laughs> it's a fun, like, what, what was that song? <laughs> 
it was it was very uh it was, it was it was it was very like out there, <laughs> but in a yes. good way. Um, it was, it was funny. Yep. Uh, so Which Robin is funny. Uh, okay, so like I will say that if you know anything about Arthurian legend, Lancelot. It's so funny that it's Lancelot who turns out to be gay, because Lancelot is the guy who I'm pretty sure sleeps with. Guinevere in the original tale. Like he's oh. like a handsome stud who gets the ladies. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. Like that might be like wrong, but I'm pretty sure Lancelot. Yeah, is um. Uh, like yeah, yeah, yep. He typically features King Arthur's greatest companion, the Lord of Joyous Guard, and the greatest swordsman on Jasper's age until his adulterous affair with Queen Guinevere is discovered. Yep. So, so I find it really funny that they decided to have a Lancelot be the gay guy. I think yeah. it's like, that's a total like subversion of Lancelot as typically portrayed in these stories. Sometimes he's portrayed as like an evil dude too. Like, ah, look at me, I'm the adulterous, like handsome dude or something. Interesting. Yep. That's interesting. Also, that him being gay was an addition in the musical that was not in the movie. No. No, it was not. So yeah, if you're confused, yeah. that's why. Yeah, he did. He did the same rescue. Did the same rescue. Yes. Uh, he just uh, did not follow through. <laughs> no, no, he did not. Uh huh. Um, and then we got Sir Robin, the not so, the not quite so brave as Sir Lancelot. Mm-hmm. Um. What more do you say? He's a coward. Yeah, he's your coward. I think he like poops on stage. He, like yeah, three he, or he, he three times himself. or something. He crap, craps himself a couple of times. Yep. And has to excuse himself. Yes. Um, Sir Galahad, the dashingly handsome after conversion, when he is proven wrong that there is in fact a Lady of the Lake that did give King Arthur the right to rule over all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um... Also, fun fact from Arthurian legend, Sir Galahad is technically Sir Lancelot's illegitimate son. What? <laughs> yeah. Yes. How technically? Well, no, he's not technically. He is. Oh, okay. But, like, I, I mean, I meant that, like, not in, not in the, the play. It's yeah. just in Arthurian legend. Also... He he's known as being pure. So again, the fact that Sir Galahad had, had to like basically sleep with Guinevere in order to become awesome is it again a subversion on Sir Galahad. Mm-hmm. See so like it it takes it takes cues from the original Arthurian legend and just kinda and twists also it. Also an addition from the movie. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the, the, again, the, the the scene discussing uh, why do you rule over us? We didn't vote for you. Oh my God! Yes. Still, there. That was a great scene. That was pretty great. That was lovely. Uh, I honestly don't remember Sir Bedivere, so I'm going to skip him. Bedivere? Oh, he was the. Oh my God! I remember him. I'm trying to remember. Did he, he have was... any songs? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think uh, Ben Devere got was, it. So. Like, I don't know. But, like, he was there. I do remember seeing him in the in the show. Yeah. Um. He's the, sir, uh, the strangely flatulent. So, Ben Devere. Yep. And, uh, of course, the Lady of the Lake. Yes. Now, I think now that the... Okay, I'm sorry I'm the one bringing all the Arthurian legend to the table, but I'm pretty sure they conflate Guinevere and Lady of the Lake. I don't think those are technically the same characters in the in legend. Okay. I'm pretty sure Guinevere... I mean, Guinevere is kind of like a... Like, she might have, like, magic, but, like... I, I, I was pretty sure Morgan Le Fay was, like, the one who also gave her... Was actually Lady in the Lake. Mm-hmm. I thought. 
or Lady in the Lake was like, she was definitely like, she like, the person who gave like from Excalibur was like a like a fae, like a like a yeah. magic person. I don't think Guinevere was was such, but okay. I mean, who knows? She could have been, and I'm just like forgetting things but i don't yeah. think so no yeah but she was really good in this show oh yeah yeah her her actor had a really good singing voice and oh, yes. had some like great moments um yes but lady in the lake the lady in the lake as far as i know and guinevere are two separate people in other legend and they kind yeah. of combined her into one character um, for the sake of this story, which is fine. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to point that out because I thought, thought it was interesting. Yeah. And then also she was completely absent from the movie. Pretty much, yeah. She even had a song where she came in and was like, I'm not in this movie anymore. Someone give me a song again. No, 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 no like, like the movie version does not. Oh, the movie version just doesn't have Guinevere. Okay, never mind. Yes. But yes. but in the play she does she is absent for a while and then yes, she comes she back is. on yeah, and is like why great. am I not here she sings the whole song about how she's upset that she doesn't get enough screen time so yes. I think that's very funny stage, or stage time yeah Sta mm -hmm. yeah I guess stage time in this case yeah um yep uh, I don't are there any other particular characters you want to talk about uh well there's the <laughs> There's that one bit, the the Nim dude, the 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 forest the trolls, knee. the Nim, yeah, that those guys. The Nim, the Nim, yeah, the the, the knights who say me. Yes, that guy. He was funny. Uh, I mean, like a lot of the characters were kind of like one-off adventures kind of thing, so none of them really like stayed around. But he was memorable. He was funny. His entourage was great. Also, Tim. Gotta remember Tim. Those who call me Tim. <laughs> Greetings, Tim. I mean, we all know Tim is the most threatening name of all time. Oh, obviously. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I do really like. Um, yeah, those two minor characters are really funny. Uh, and then the... there was Lancelot's husband, whose name whose name I completely forget. Uh, I think it was like supposed to be what Prince Herbert. Herbert, right? Yep, Herbert was a, a, a fun character too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we can't forget the French taunters. Oh my lord! Yes. Oh my god, those were they were funny. Yep. <laughs> Who is your favorite? Who's your favorite? Which character do you think made you laugh the most? <laughs> that's a good question i always ask the best questions because they all made me laugh a lot oh boy well, who, well, I'm thinking, then? Who, who made you laugh the most um i don't know a lot of them made me laugh oh excuse me a lot of them made me laugh pretty equally i think yeah. There were a lot of really good jokes that I laughed at, that I remember, but I, I don't know if there was like one particular gonna, character that I was right. like, that was like having me bawling every time they're on screen or on, yeah. on stage. So. I'm going to say my favorite joke overall was a joke that's only in this show. It was the arms for arms for the poor. Arms for the poor. That was. Oh, do you mean like as in it was only in the stage version? Oh, okay. It was, Sorry, it was not... I was conf I was confused. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah, no. yeah that you... that was re that was really funny. That was like a nice pun. Yeah. It's like, why are they asking alms for the poor? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I get it because they needed time to set it up so Sir Arthur could cut off the Black Knight's legs. <laughs> Because they can't do it like they did in the movie. Yep, and... exactly. Yep. It's amazing. I'm glad they did that and managed to make it work. I know. That's really, it's really clever. Yeah, and that, like, I, I know I looked back there and I couldn't really see, like, 
a bus going on to get that to work. Yeah, no, it uh, was very impressive stage work. Yeah, very interesting that like you just you know, stabbed him and then like cut off the legs and like, yep, oh, you're just pinned here for the rest of your life now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, speaking of moments and songs, uh, what are some moments and songs you enjoyed from this show? Um, well, I mean, obviously, got to give a shout out to "Always Look on the Bright Side of Life." That song's a classic. Yep. Uh, although to be honest, I'll be let me I'll be honest here for a moment. I feel like "Always Look on the Bright Side of Life" kind of loses some of its original punch because that song was originally from "Life of Brian." Which is yep. another Monty Python movie. And that song, for those of you who don't know, Life of Brian is basically like Jesus, but like not Jesus. It's basically a parody of, of, the, of Jesus' life. Only instead of it being Jesus, it was like his brother Brian or something. Yeah. I, I don't remember exactly the premise, but basically it was, it's basically a parody of Jesus' life. Only it was like, it's like his forgotten like other person. I'm pretty sure. Let me double check my work here. No, not Life of Brain. Life of Brian. The Life of Pinky and the Brain. Yes, Pinky and the Brain. Not that. Uh, Oh, yeah. It says, the film tells of Brian Cohen, a young Jewish man who was born on the same day as and next door to Jesus Christ and is subsequently mistaken for the Messiah. So, yeah. And uh, always look on the bright side of life is sung while Brian is being crucified. Yep. Which, to me, is a lot funnier, right? Like, yeah. it's definitely more of a dark comedy joke, right? Like, he's singing about how great life is while he's literally being tortured. So, so to me, I mean, I understand why they put it in the play. Always Look on the Bright Side of Life is one of the more famous songs from Monty Python. Yeah. Like, I'm not even sure if there's any other songs that was in a movie from or any of the sketches that would have been as popular as Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. Indeed. So I get why they included it. All my point is is that I, I feel like the life of Brian I feel like it's it's it was its placement in Life of Brian makes more sense and definitely works better than its placement in this show. In my opinion. Yeah, that's fair. That's like, fair. like I'm not saying it doesn't work. Like, I still, it's still a fun song. They still sing it, like, at sort of, like, a down point. So, it's still funny. But, I think it's hum. It loses its original humor um, from being lifted. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, what's funny? Are them singing it when they're in, stuck in a... In a dark forest that they eventually come out of, or when Brian is literally about to die, like I, I feel like I feel like the latter it has more comedic potential. But indeed, regardless of any of that, always like inside side life is still a really funny song. It's like super chipper, and it has some funny lines in it, and it's a lot of fun to sing along to. So even though it was. No, it's even outside of its original context. It's still it's still a good song. So, and definitely deserves to be the highlight song of the show. So yeah, I'm not. I don't have any. I don't have any grudges or anything against that aspect of it. Yeah. So. What about you? Uh. I very much appreciate the song that goes like this. <laughs> yeah yes yes that's great yeah that was a great moment i think that that definitely i mean it's true yeah Smo most if not all musicals have that song that goes like this yeah yep and then the song that goes like this reprise ha -ha. oh yeah yep twice in every show <laughs> yep it's it, it's I, I love it i love how they poke fun at musical structure yeah. in that way yeah yeah uh, um we definitely and also definitely shout out to you won't succeed on broadway <laughs> what the song 
You won't succeed on Broadway? Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. I was like, I don't know. I, for some reason, I thought you were calling, you were shouting out to someone because, like, for some reason, the, the words before are on Broadway sounded like a weird name to me. Because yeah. I guess maybe you said them too fast or, like, I don't know. Well, I was really confused. Yes, I'm shouting out, you, you won't succeed on Broadway. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, I, yeah, that song's funny. Indeed. Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's a good, good, good laugh. Yes. As uh, most of the songs are in the show, I think. Yeah. So, so they start looking for a grail and mm-hmm. they have to find a shrub yep. and then they have to find, to make a Broadway show yep. in order that they have to find Jew. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And at the end of the show, Patsy's like, I'm a quarter Jewish on my mother's side. It's like, why didn't you tell me before? I'm like, I mean, I, I don't think that's something I should tell to a heavily armed Christian. Yep. That was a pretty great joke. <laughs> yep. And um, I really I really appreciated it. Dude, um... Oh, he's not dead yet, as well. Oh, yeah! Oh, my God. I am not yet dead. I can dance and I can sing. I am not yet dead. I can do the I'm a thing. I am not yet dead. No need to go to bed. No need to call a doctor, because I'm not yet dead. <laughs> good old time. Um, yeah. yeah. Those um, are the good uh, Those are definitely the good songs. Mm-hmm. Do you think there are any duds? Um, not duds, just one. They're, they're just ones I don't enjoy as much. Yeah, uh, I feel that. Yeah, like the fish, the fish slapping song. Oh yeah. Yeah, like that was funny. It's just like structurally, why? Right. <laughs> like I, that's that that's that co- that's another previously written song that they put into the show yeah because it came from monty python's contractual obligation album <laughs> um nice and i mean it was funny again yes um yeah so i think the music in this show is pretty good and i yeah. think it complements the humor nicely um what did you think of the, um, oh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, oh boy. Um, the, oh, I also really liked Camelot as like Vegas. That was funny oh, too. Yeah. Oh, I like how they played Fast and Loose with History too, um, as you do in a comedy like this, um. You were asking me something? Uh, oh, and there was the demonic rabbit thing. Yes. Oh yes. my god. So fun fact, uh, in Minecraft, there's a reference to this bunny. Um, uh, every bunny, like, I think it's like, I don't know the probability of it, but like, there's a very rare chance that if you see a bunny, it might be this bunny. Yep. From the show and the movie. So, fun fact. The only bunny that actually would hurt you. Yeah. So. Yeah, th- th- this particular bit of Monty Python has gone reference a fair bit, N- not just the the rabbit of Ki- the the killer rabbit of Karen Kerbanog, uh, but also the holy hand grenade, which is used to defeat it. Oh yes, yes, the holy hand grenade. The holy hand grenade is is a cannon weapon in the Fallout franchise. It's also a weapon in some other games too. I've seen it. Oh yeah. So yeah. I just think of them off the top of my head. I know Fallout's one of them. Yep. Holy hand grenade. I mean, like it's a great weapon name, the holy hand grenade. Yes, indeed. Also, there is a transformer based on the rapid of camera bit off. Oh, okay. I was I thought you were talking about the holy hand grenade. I was like, what? That seems like oh, a yeah. dumb idea for a transformer. No offense, like 
transforming into a weapon that can only be used once like yikes that's uh, like a sad know? existence uh go back and read the first season of writing of of more than meets the eye what go back and read the first season of more than meets the eye you meet a character that is literally that oh well <laughs> but like still sad life sad yeah. life more than me see eyes, oh. too many characters don't at me. Anyway, um <laughs> Well, I'm trying to remember that that the, the, the Transformers name. I think it's Verminator. Oh wow, Verminator. okay. I don't recognize that name at all. Well, it, it you shouldn't. Like, it's a very obscure Transformer published through club fiction only. Oh, okay. As, I see. Like, an in jokey reference. Um that's like not properly addressed, but it exists. Gotcha. It is well, considered canon. Ah. Why me see eyes too many characters don't at me? Anyway, um as we were saying, um yeah, sp- um the the lot there's a lot of really good bits in this in this play and um a lot of them work really well, I think. Mm-hmm. Um and they're all, it's all very like, um, yeah, no, it, it's 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 really it's you know, it, it's a there's the whole thing about sparrows and and crows like, what was that about about like what was uh what weight was, or something uh, I forget the exact oh, context oh, they were talking about the coconut and like oh yeah if, how 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 did they get a coconut here it was like well. What do you mean? Well, well, coconuts are in a tropical climate. We're in a temperate climate. I don't know. A sparrow brought it to me. African or European? A, a swallow call brought it to me. African or European? Uh, what do you mean? Because because an African, uh, a European swallow would not be able to carry a coconut of its weight because it flaps its wing 43 times per minute. Uh, but an African swallow, maybe. But the uh, African swallows, don't... and then there's the whole discussion in King Arthur's just like, I'm done. Yeah, I think it's really funny. Not only is it just like this guy like trying to figure out how a coconut got to got to England, but like also just like that some random guard would know all this stuff. It's really, I think that's part of the funny aspect of that joke so i like it a lot too yeah um mm-hmm. i do wish you saw the movie version so we could talk about the differences between this and the movie a bit more yeah i wish i had to i need to it's on my very long bucket list yeah because um in the original because there are, because there are differences there are some notable differences mm-hmm. um, but like I think the changes make sense to make the story more cohesive uh, overarching me. story even though like uh, the lady of the lake points out they lose the plot <laughs> at some point oh and yeah oh yeah all, all of these fetch quests <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah uh, because uh, the the fact that the French had the Holy Grail was like, yeah, we actually have the legit Holy Grail, and was the thing at the end of the, the the movie of the movie version. Yep. But it doesn't get resolved because they ran out of budget to make the film, so they just arrested all the knights for murder. <laughs> yep. And then did the film right there. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail had a lot of budget issues. Yeah. But it's kind of funny how they resolved it that way. And it's still yeah. funny, right? Like Yeah, indeed. That's what's pretty uh, great uh, about it. I, I'm still I'm impressed though that they got the cows to work. The cows to what? The cows. They threw the cows. What cows? The French threw cows. Oh that wait, that was in the play? Yeah. There is that whole big thing that they just lobbed over the wall and then they brought the screen down and they had the running animation in the background of cows just Oh, yes, die. you're right. Okay, sorry. I was like, I don't remember them, like, chucking a cow, like, literally. They did what? literally chuck a cow, though. They did literally chuck a cow. Okay. 
Oh no, you're right. You're right. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> uh, I I'm pleased that they managed to keep that in. Yes, me too. Yep. Uh, also the the Trojan bunny. Oh my god, yes. The the funniest the funniest part of that bit was like they bring the bunny in and then like uh the guy's like, Alright, so now what so now we do and then he's like, We're gonna now jump into the rabbit <laughs> And I was like, Oh my god Like you idiots I, it was so funny. Yeah. Cause you think that that it's gonna be that it's just the fact that it's a bunny that's the joke, but like, it's that they didn't they f they messed it up. That's the joke, and I like that too. Yeah. Indeed. Um, yes. They unfortunately had to get. They unfortunately did get rid of uh, a particularly funny scene. Where the 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 knights that have survived up to that point, um, ha uh, have to cross a bridge and ha are questioned, have to answer these questions three to cross the bridge. And that was a particularly hilarious gag. Oh, um, that's funny. So, do, so I'll I'll just explain this skit really quick if you don't know, which okay. unless you, so like the wait, first wait, hold on. Since I haven't seen Monty Python's. Can I? Can we not? Oh sure. Cause like. You want to experience it for yourself. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, fair, I do. Fair. Yeah. Like I'm like, I'm sure it wouldn't be. It would be funny just to see it on how it plays out on uh -huh. TV, but or like on the movie, but like even if you did explain, I'm sure it'd be funny, funny to see it anyway. But you know, if it's not necessary, then I'd say don't. Fair. For That's my true. sake, if nothing else. <laughs> Since I already spoiled the ending. I mean, it's fine. Let's see. I mean, like, honestly, like, in a lot of comedies, the the ending isn't, like, as important, if that makes sense. No, oh, yeah. That's like, fair. Like, a lot of the moments that I remember from comedies that make me really laugh aren't necessarily how it ends, but, like, all the jokes in between, so. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I don't really mind that aspect of it. Yeah. Um... But are there um, anything you didn't like about this production? Um. Well, I will say that it was really unfortunate that the theater we saw it in was kind of not really falling apart per se, but it was uh, definitely well kept. Yeah, there was like a lot of Our paint well chipping. Kept as it should be. There was a lot of paint chipping. There was like tiles f from the roof falling off. I I think I think there was a, a kind of a loose panel above my seat or very close to above our seat. Yeah, which I mean it didn't annoy me really once the show started, but Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know. Oh, it, yeah. I think it sort of takes away from the atmosphere, right? Like makes yeah. you feel like you're in a third-rate location. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like like it's not if it was like in a like in a not in a like old theater like in a grand theater, I probably would be like, oh, this is fine, but, you know. No, yeah. Need that upkeep. So, yeah. But. I wonder how bad the backstage looks. Oh, I'm sure it's terrible. <sighs> I mean, granted, I, I don't go, I don't visit backstages too often in shows, but. Because I don't, I don't act. In backstage really. at a different theater. Uh, not uh -huh. the same that that was at but near me and uh i mean mm -hmm. the front the audience and the stage itself looked good but the it's backstage good. oh my god it's a mess <laughs> you're gonna be honest it's all right it happens to the best of us and yeah. even the worst of us um i mean i i know that's like a stupid thing it's yeah, not it's not a, it's not, it's not a fault show. no it's not a fault of the show it was just the particular venue we were at it looked a little grubby so yeah. You know what you're gonna do, uh, and then I I also um, really uh, liked. Oh my gosh, sorry. Um, I also was a. Um, I'm trying to think of anything. Like I said, I mean the only other really big onion that I had was just the the fact that it was the fact that always look on the bright side of life was like not as funny in its outside of original context. Yeah. 
But, like, that's, like, a minor thing, you know? Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Do you have any particular... Not particularly. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, it's a good, it's a good romp. It's a good romp. It's a good time. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun, it's a fun play. I feel like, honestly, I feel like this is one of those plays that, you know... It's better, it's better left for you all to seek yeah. out and see. Yeah. Though, it's a, though I will say it's not, it, it's just one of those Broadway shows where you go just to have a good time rather than like making you think. Oh, yeah, of course. Like there's, there's a couple of jabs of commentary. Oh, yeah. Like, a lot of them are very recent, though. You know, like they're very much speaking to the crowd and present day events and stuff like that. Yeah. Like there was the towards the end when like uh, Lancelot and and uh, um, uh, 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 I forgot his name already. The Knight of Knee. No, um, the boyfriend. Herbert. Herbert. Uh, when they got married, there there was a comment of think think about this, Patsy. In a thousand years' time, this will still be controversial. <laughs> Um, I mean, he's not wrong. Yeah. Oh, and then there was a gr- the, there's the great jab that happened at our production. Oh, which yep. W- wouldn't happen at any other production because it was very specifically timely. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because we we saw it the weekend after the government shutdown ended. Yes. Yeah. And there's the state of the union address going on, and what was it when the, it was the scene where the knight of knee said, "We are no longer the knights of knee. We are now the knights of uh, icky icky, whatever." And then, but in the movie, it's just that. But in the, I guess in the stage production, they can do something. There's there's a bit of improv. Yes. Yeah. That moment in in ours version, it was like. We are the knights of icky icky. Ooh, ooh, boy, you better get your your butt back to Camelot. And that State of the Union address better be good because that government shutdown was ridiculous. Yeah. And the whole audience was just bawling. I think I think they uh, I think the actors had to wait for the audience to die down before they could continue. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, that was a, that was a joke we could all agree on. <laughs> it is. It is, yeah. Um, yeah, but just overall, just a good time. It was a good time. If you, if you need something to lift your spirits, this this is a good good show for you. Yeah, I think it. I think it has a lot of really good uh, good jokes, good good atmosphere. Um, it's really funny. Yeah. It's a good time. Solid Indeed. good time. Yes. Uh, but do you have anything else to add? Uh, not really. Uh, I think I've said everything I wanted to say about it. Um, it's unfortunate that we were talking about it a little bit past when we saw it. You know, so it's not yeah. entirely fresh in my brain. But I do remember having a good time. I do remember yes. being a ball. And uh, I guess the... The, the company that we were seeing it tours, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so they might be playing it in a theater near you if you want to see it on yeah. Broadway. Broadway. Not yeah. actual Broadway, like quote, quote unquote, yes. Broadway. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's it for me for this uh, show. Uh, so, uh, Alyssa, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at the Rational Dove. Check me out there. I still need to put up the second part of my Twitter thing. I haven't done that yet because I've been busy with schoolwork, but it's coming. So watch out for that. Yeah, and you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Soundjack four twenty six. Also, you can uh, help support the channel at Coffee. You can check the link down in the description below. Below, uh, and also you can find both of us on our new gaming channel rdsj gaming please uh, please view us uh we, we we're we're very small we need the help if yes. if you if you're interested even a little bit we highly yes. recommend you 
head yes. on over there and check us out. Got two playthroughs going on right now. One of them being Transformers PS2 with both of us, and the other being Crash Bandicoot with Alyssa. Yeah. So so yeah, check us out there. Yeah. So check that out if you feel good. And uh, with that being said, thanks for tuning in. This is Soundjack and Alyssa signing off. Thank you.